All right, we're going to do some practice for a simplifying expression. I think we have 13 practices on this page. So remember, when we're doing all multiply, like number one, there's no add or subtract. So we don't have to worry about distributive property. This is all just multiply. Bring the coefficients to the front. Negative three times two times negative six. The variables hang on. And we just multiply the coefficients together. Negative times positive times negative makes negative. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 6 is 36. So this becomes negative 36x. On number 2, same idea. Just bring the coefficients to the front. So we have 15 over 7 times 14 over 3. The variables stay in the back. You could do some cross-canceling here with these fractions. 15 and 3 are both divisible by 3. 14 and 7 are both divisible by 7. And then you just have to multiply the new numbers. 5 times 2 is 10. 1 times 1 on the bottom. And when you simplify this, it just makes 10AB. Because 10 over 1 is equal to 10. So 5 times 2 gave you the 10. 1 times 1 gave you the 1. The variables just hang on. And we end up with 10AB. On number 3, again, this is all still multiply. And I know that because these parentheses are right next to each other. So bring all the number coefficients to the front. So we have a 5, a negative 3, and a negative 4. And the variables A, B, C, D in the back. Just multiply positive times negative times negative makes positive. 5 times 3 is 15, times 4 is 60, and the variables are A, B, C, D. So we're going to do the same thing here. This is all still multiply. You do not have to worry about distributive property when everything is multiply. It, it's just when you start getting add and subtract in the parentheses that you have to worry about distribute. So as long as everything's multiply, just bring the numbers to the front negative 2 times 5.5, the variables in the back, x, y, z. So negative 2 times 5.5, first of all, negative times positive is negative. 2 times 5.5, if you don't remember, you can write it off here to the side, 5.5 times 2, it turns out to be 11. So this is negative 11, x, y, z. Now we noticed something different here. Now I have add and subtract in the parentheses. If you can add and subtract in the parentheses, follow order, order of operations. But since these are not like terms, I can't add them. So this is when I have to use distributive property, when I can't get rid of the parentheses by just adding. So we're going to have 2 times x, then 2 times 5. And you can write arrows if you want, 2 times x, 2 times positive 5. So we get 2x plus 10. Number 6 is the same concept. It's just more terms in the parentheses. But again, you can combine these like terms first if you want. I see that the uh, 2x and the negative 1x are like terms. I can combine these if I want. Or I can distribute first and combine them after. It doesn't matter. I'm going to combine them first. Um, so I'm not doing anything with a negative 4. The 2x and the negative 1x, 2 minus 1 is 1, so I have 1x plus 3y. And then I'm going to use distributive property. Negative 4 times x, negative 4 times 3y. On number 7, first looking to see if there are any like terms, and they aren't. One has a, then b, then c. So these are all unlike terms, so I'm just distributing. And again, when you just have the negative sign, it's just distributing a negative 1. And the only thing that happens when you distribute negative 1 is all the signs change. So negative 1 times 3a, negative 3a. Negative 1 times negative b, positive b. Negative 1 times negative 5c, positive 5c. The only thing that happens when you distribute a negative sign is that the signs change. Number nine is like one of the examples we did in the lesson. 
you've got a negative 2 being multiplied and a 3 on the other side being multiplied. And you can make this easier by reordering this. This is commutative. It doesn't matter what order you multiply in. So I'm going to bring the 3 to the front and multiply it times the negative 2 first. Then I'll distribute times the x plus 4y minus 5b. So 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. When I distribute negative 6 to the terms inside this parentheses, I have negative 6 times x first makes negative 6x. Then negative 6 times 4y, negative times positive, makes negative. 6 times 4 is 24, so negative 24y. Negative 6 times negative 5z. Negative times negative makes positive this time. 6 times 5 is 30, and I have the z variable. So this is what I end up with. You always want to look after you distribute to see if there are any like terms, because you're not done simplifying if you haven't combined all the like terms. But this is x, this is y, this is z, so none of these are like terms, so we're done now. Number 10 has no distribute. So again, to simplify, we're looking for like terms. And I'm going to look at the terms that have the highest exponent first. We call this putting things in descending order, which we'll talk about in a, in a later chapter. Uh, here's an a squared term, and here's another a squared term. To add them together, we add the coefficients. So we add 3 and negative 1 makes 2a squared. And then we have an a term of 5a and a negative 1a. And when we add those, we're adding 5 and negative 1, which makes positive 4a. So this is done. Simplified. On number 11, first identify the like terms. This is xy. This is xy squared. So these are not like terms. This term is also xy. So this first term, 4xy, and this last term, 3xy, are like terms. So we can combine those together. So we add the coefficients. 4 plus 3 makes 7xy. And this third term, negative 5, xy squared doesn't have anything to add to, so we're just tacking it on there. Number 12, we've got some terms here, but it looks like we need to uh, get rid of these parentheses. These are not like terms, so I'm going to have to distribute. This looks really confusing because there's a lot of plus and minuses here. What am I actually distributing to get rid of these parentheses? This term, the 3x, is the only term that's right next to the parentheses. So this is what you're going to distribute to the parentheses. This is separated by a plus sign, so it's not being multiplied. It's going to be added after. This is add, and this is add. So this is the term that you're going to distribute. So we're going to first carry down the 5, because we're not doing anything with it. Then we're going to distribute the negative 3x. The negative goes with 3. So negative 3x times x makes negative 3x squared. We haven't talked about really x times x yet, but that's what it is. And then we're going to distribute the negative 3x times the negative 4. Negative times negative makes positive, so we're going to have positive 12x. This plus 3x and minus x squared here are not being distributed, so they're just going to tack on to the end here. So plus 3x minus x squared. Now we're looking for like terms. I have a 3x squared and a negative 1x squared. Oh, it's negative 3x squared and negative 1x squared. Make negative, negative 3, negative 1, make negative 4, x squared. Then I have a 12x and a 3x. They're both positive, so that's going to make positive 15x. And what else do I have left? Just this positive 5 here. So on the end, plus 5. And this is our simplified expression. Number 13, similar, but this time we have uh, three sets of parentheses, and they all have something to distribute in front of them. So we're going to do the distribute here first with a 3. So what are we going to have? 3 times 4x is 12x. 3 
times 3, 9, that's positive 9. Negative 1 times negative x, okay, remember negative times negative makes positive, so that would be positive x. Negative 1 times negative 5, positive 5. Negative 2 times 3x, negative 6x. Negative 2 times 4, negative 8. And then looking for like terms. So we have a 12x, a 1x, and a negative 6x. Add the coefficients. 12 plus 1 is 13 minus 6 is 7. So this becomes 7x. We have positive 9, positive 8, oh, sorry, positive 5, and negative 8. So, and it doesn't matter what order you add them in. I'm actually going to do this in different order. Positive 9 minus 8 makes 1. 1 plus 5 is 6. So 7x plus 6. 